Okay, can we, we will be starting in one minute. Okay, you will start it. Dr. Nur, will you record on the YouTube? We are already on YouTube. Okay, so uh, good evening to all uh, professor, senior, uh, colleagues, resident and medical student and also other specialties. Uh, my name is Guatane Baho. Uh, on behalf of the Neurosurgery Department of Pajajaran University, me and Dr. Roland, Dr. Selfi, Dr. Agung, uh, we welcome you to our second webinar series on the skull based virtual uh, visiting professor lecture. Today we're going to have Professor Takeo Goto. Uh, Goto Sensei is the professor and the chairman of the Neurosurgery Department of Osaka City University Graduate School of Medicine. As we already know that the Osaka City University is a great place and excellent in scalp surgery. Today, we're going to have uh, two lectures. The first is holistic craniopharyngioma, open and endoscopy. And the second is the step by step combined petrosal approach for the skull based tumor. In every lecture, we're going to have uh, around 15 minutes uh, discussion within the panelists and attendees. And we already have. Uh, Invited panelists. Uh, also, uh, not forget to welcome uh, Professor Fred Gentili. Here, also, we already have Dr. Andrew Basuki, uh, Dr. Nyoman Golden, Dr. Dodi, Priyambada, Dr. Renindra, uh, Dr. Rahadian Indarto, uh, Dr. Ahmad Yana, Dr. Iwan Berlian, Dr. Denny Wisnu, Dr. Sinatria, Dr. Rian Rifeldi, Dr. Anom Ananta. So, uh, we invite you all to give your comment, question, and discussion. Uh, you can click the raise hand button on the participant window. And then also you can write uh, down your question using the Q&A box on the middle of below of the Zoom panel. And also we will give you the certificate of the attendees uh, will be sent to your email address within one week. So uh, I think Professor Goto, can you uh, share screen your lecture for the first okay. lecture? Can you see the my uh, slide? Uh, not yet, Sensei. Not yet? Okay. Not yet, yeah. Can you see my slide? Okay. Yes, Sensei. Yes, already. Okay. 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 So okay. now the I uh, will start the first lecture. At first, I I'm very uh, I feel very honored to have the opportunity to this uh, web seminar. Thank you, all Professor uh, uh, Roland and Gratan and all staff in Bandu Group. At first, uh, I will teach the surgical uh, strategy for cranial pharyngioma open and endoscopic approach. Uh, about uh, 10 years ago, I used to try to uh, reject the cranial pharyngioma by the transcranial uh, approach, like the interhemispheric, orbitozygomatic, and transpetrosal approach. I uh, published the oral work to the some paper, and I think the result of the surgery not bad, uh, this is a example. Uh, this patient shows the dementia and tumor occupy in the third ventricle. So this is a, a intra-third ventricular type cranial pharyngioma. This is an optic chiasm and this is an echo. To remove this part, I think the interhemispheric approach, trans lamina terminalis root is one of the options to nice resection of the tumor. So uh, in such a case, uh, I use uh, 
uh, interhemispheric approach. This is a surgical video. Can you see uh, the video? Uh, not yet, Goto Sensei. Not yet? Not yet. It still freeze. Okay. Hmm? Ah, sorry, <laughs> now the, I cannot. Uh. It's okay, go to see. Hmm? Uh, go to Sensei, may I suggest to unshare the screen first and then share it again? Because sometimes uh, it can fix the problem. No, can you see the video? No. Uh, not yet. You do you already click one of your video? I think you I can try to stop share screen and then uh, share screen it again. Sometimes it happens. Can you see? Uh, can you see yet. the video? No. No, not yet, Sensei. Can you see the video? Mm, not yet, Sensei. Mm. Mm. So, uh, sorry. <laughs> Uh, Why, Professor Goto? Uh, maybe, maybe uh, you can stop the share screen first, and then share screen again. Maybe sometime happen like uh, something. Yeah, and now can you share screen again? Re, re share screen. Maybe can help. Can you see the slide? Yes. Of course. Good. Can see. Perfect. Perfect. Can you see the video? Uh, not yet, can see. Not yet? Not yet. Hmm. Hmm. 
I think it's the problem from loading the video from the source to the slides. Mm -hmm. Sensei, maybe we can play your video directly from the the one that you have in your computer. Mm. It's okay to just keep changing the PowerPoint to the video. Okay. Or you just play the video and then uh, then start share screen. Just play the okay. video first and then share screen. Have you had problems with video playing in other uh, webinars? Uh, no. Uh, Can you see the video? Yes, yes. Perfect. 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 Very perfect. perfect. Um, sorry, the technically very it's difficult. No, no, it's uh, difficult. This is a surgical video of the interhemispheric approach. Uh, ten years ago, I think it's the best uh, approach to enter the third ventricle. And uh, but uh, in this surgery, we have to always care the perforator. And uh, I carefully dissect the tumor from the uh, wall of the third ventricle. But uh, of course, uh, most part of the tumor successfully resected out. This is a tumor and this is in the third ventricle. And this is a ACOM. But the problem in this approach, we cannot observe the inter uh, inferior surface of the optic chiasm. So, uh, of course, the tumor grows totally rejected out, mm. but always I feel the surgical field is not large. Uh, but uh, uh, through this approach, uh, we can reject the uh, old tumor. But this time, the, we sacrifice the pituitary function. 
this is uh, another case of the uh, cranial pharyngioma. Can you see the slide? Yes, Goto Sensei. Perfect. Uh, this tumor has a large calcification. So it usually very difficult to crush the calcified tumor by the interhemispheric approach. In such situation, the transpetrosal approach is very uh, effective procedure to remove the hard calcified tumor. So I choose the uh, Uh, can you see the, this video? Uh, not yet, Koto Sensei. Maybe it no. will take time. Not yet. Can you see the video? Yes, perfectly. Uh, sorry, <laughs> then. then. Uh, this is a transpetrosal approach to the retrochiasmatic the calcified cranial pharyngioma. Uh, this is a petrous ridge, and this is a pre sigmoid space. I uh, open the uh, uh, ramen, uh, tentorium, and this is a carotid artery, uh, third nerve, and torocrean nerve, and this is a tumor. The tumor was very calcified, but uh, using this approach, we can crush the calcified tumor. And this is a pituitary stock. This tumor was very large calcification and the patient age was very young. So we decided to cut the PCOM and uh, elevate the perforator upward to enlarge the surgical corridor. So the, uh, this is a third nerve and we can look up the tumor. This is a contralateral third nerve. I dissect the PCOM. And finally, the uh, old tumor was successfully dissected out through this uh, approach. But uh, always we feel that the tumor, a uh, cranial pharyngioma originated uh, within the circle of wheels. So even choose the old surgical procedure, uh, surgical corridor was uh, very small. But uh, recent advancement of the endoscopic endonasal approach dramatically changed the situation. If we observe the circle of wheels from below to above, after the drill out the both posterior crinoid and the dorsum cera, we can directly enter the uh, within the circle of wheels. So recently, uh, since 2014, I applied the endoscopic endonasal approach all type of the cranial pharyngioma. For example, the this is a retrochiasmatic type. I drill out the bony structure and look up the tumor like this. Even in the intrasad ventricular type, I also drill out the bony structure and look up the region. Uh, since 2014, I operate uh, 59 cases of the cranial pharyngioma by the endoscopic endonasal approach. I will show the case. Uh, this is tumor occupied in the third ventricle. I used to uh, select the uh, transcranial approach, but recently I removed this tumor by the endoscopic endonasal approach. Can you see video? No? Oh, it's not showing, Koto Sensei. Can you see the video? Yes, yes. perfectly, Dr. Sensei. Uh, this is a surgical video of the endoscopic endonasal approach. Uh, at first, 
I widely uh, drill out the bony structure around the cellar floor. This is a cellar floor, and this is an inferior wall of the cavernous sinus. I prefer to use a 30 degree endoscope. I think that in the cranial pharyngeal surgery, bone work was very important. I drilled out the tuberculum cellar, and this is the optic channel, and this is uh, the wall of the cavernous sinus, bony wall of the cavernous sinus. This is a carotid artery. I uh, remove the bony structure under the carotid artery. This is a left uh, uh, right carotid artery. I also drill out the this part and remove the uh, bony structure to enlarge the surgical corridor. And this is the upper clivus, and this is a paraclival uh, carotid artery. I remove the uh, bony structure around the uh, paraclival carotid artery to expose the drum matter. This is the lateral end of the clivus. After that, I gently elevate the drum matter upward to expose the dorsum cella and the posterior crinoid. After drilling out the upper clivus and uh, gently remove the uh, cella floor upward, we can uh, safely drill out the both posterior crinoid and dorsum cella. I dissect the bony structure. This is a light posterior crinoid process. I uh, removed out without any bleeding of the cavernous sinus. And uh, posterior crinoid safely removed out. Uh, this uh, bone work was very uh, useful for safe resection of the cranial pharyngeal. And then I uh, cut the uh, tuberculum cella, and this is a pituitary gland. After the wide uh, bony drilling, we can gently retract the pituitary gland. This is a remnant of the left uh, posterior crinoid. I also uh, dissect and removed. This is a pituitary gland, and this is a cavernous sinus on both sides. After that, the pituitary gland mobilized the one side. In this case, I mobilize the pituitary gland to the left side, and this is a pituitary stalk. Uh, fortunately, we can find out the border between the pituitary stalk and the tumor. And then uh, I carefully dissect the tumor uh, from the pituitary stalk. This is a border between the uh, tumor and the optic chiasm, and uh, this is a, a tumor in the third ventricle. Uh, fortunately, this tumor not uh, adhere the wall of the third ventricle, so I carefully dissect the tumor. And then uh, I removed out all tumor. This is a pituitary gland, and this is a pituitary stalk. And this is a ball speed cone, and this is a floor of third ventricle. Using this approach, I rejected out all tumor and preserve the pituitary gland and the stalk anatomically. But unfortunately, uh, we cannot preserve the pituitary function. But DI was uh, uh, disappeared uh, after the six months follow-up period. Uh, I skip that this case, the time is limited. And this is another case of the recurrent cranial pharyngioma with the large calcification. This is a recurrent case, and the patient age is a three-year-old female. But I choose the endoscopic endonasal approach to crush the calcified tumor.
Can you see the video? Yes, good to see. Uh, even the, the three-year-old girl, we can get the enough space to perform the endoscopic and nasal approach. I uh, use the same technique, drill out the both posterior clinoid, and this is a pituitary gland, and this is a pituitary stalk. I mobilize the pituitary stalk on the one side, and this is a calcified tumor. Uh, after the drilling out of and upper clivus, we can get to the uh, wide surgical corridor to uh, dissect this calcified tumor. And uh, I uh, meticulously uh, dissect the tumor. This case, uh, this is a recurrent tumor, but using the endoscope, I can observe the old wall of uh, the uh, third ventricle, so I can remove the old tumor step by step. And finally, the old tumor was resected out. Uh, Post-operatively, the old tumor was successfully resected out. And fortunately, in this case, uh, uh, pituitary function also preserved, memory, vision also preserved. Uh, this is another case of the recurrent uh, craniopharyngioma. This case, the uh, uh, tumor located the more lateral side. This is the optic tract, and this is the hypothalamus. Uh, so the transcranial approach was uh, very difficult. So I also choose the uh, endoscopic and nasal approach. But to enlarge the surgical corridor in lateral direction, I also drill out the posterior clinoid. Uh, I also choose the uh, endoscopic and nasal approach, and the surgical pro uh, procedure always same. In case of the complicated case. I combined uh, uh, both posterior cholinoidectomy and also upper clivectomy. This is a paraclival carotid artery, and I remove the posterior cholinoid on both sides. Uh, after this bone work, we can get to the relatively large surgical corridor. This is a at atrophic pituitary gland. In this case, a previous surgeon already sacrificed a pituitary function. So uh, we no need to care the pituitary function, just a total removal and preservation of the memory and vision is our goal. This is a vagal artery and this is a PCA and this is a oculomotor nerve. And I dissect the tumor and the uh, tract uh, using this approach, we can directly reach under the optic tract. So we, we can safely remove the tumor. After that, we have to water tightly seal the matter. So the, in such situation, I think the, to uh, put the, some suture was very useful. Of course, no need to water tightly close the dramata, but I put the, some material like the fat tissue or uh, duragen and put some stitch to uh, dura mater. Uh, the suture is to put the tension to the dura mater. After I put the several stitch, uh, fat was fixed and uh, skull base almost water tightly sealed. 
uh, this suturing technique was uh, very useful to prevent the CSF leakage. I insert the fat tissue to the subdural space and put the suture. Finally, the uh, dural defect almost watertightly sealed and covers uh, uh, some material and nasal flap. Using this uh, material, After the tumor removal, uh, tumor was totally resected out and uh, we not encounter the CSF leakage. I skipped this case, but uh, uh, nicely resected the endoscope. The problem is the such kind of the tumor. How to treat this case? This is a very large calcified cranial pharyngioma occupied the third ventricle. Uh, the tumor removal was very risky. So previous doctor decided to put the VP shunt and hollow up the patient. But unfortunately, the size of tumor increased and this tumor called, caused uh, mild hypopetitaries and mild cognitive dysfunction. So the um, pa uh, previous doctor referred patient to us. So. Uh, how to uh, remove this calcified tumor? I choose the endoscopic endonasal approach to crush this uh, calcified tumor because the origin of the tumor is a pituitary stock. So if you uh, observe the uh, region, uh, region from the below to above, we can enlarge the relatively wide surgical corridor. So I choose the endoscopic approach. Can you see the video? Yes, good to see. Mm. Uh, I uh, use the same procedure uh, directly uh, Dory out to the tuberculum cera, cera floor, and uh, uh, upper clivus. And this is a calcified tumor. Uh, through our cero procedure, we can insert the three instruments one, two, three. So uh, we can meticulously crush the uh, such kind of the calcified tumor. And uh, we carefully dissect the calcified tumor. This is a PCA and it's perforator. Uh, using the high magnification of the endoscope, we can gently uh, dissect uh, uh, such kind of the small perforator. And we can use the three instruments like this. So we can gently dissect the calcified tumor from the Perforator from the PCA or PCOM. This is a border between the tumor and the third ventricle. I meticulously follow the border of the tumor, not to injure the uh, hypothalamus. Of course, uh, this calcified tumor strongly adhere to the uh, hornix, but using this approach, we can directly reach around the horamen of Mondo. This is a horamen Mondo. I uh, meticulously cut and dissect the calcified part and gently dissect this uh, small artery. Of course, I left behind the small calcification around the horamen of Mondo. And uh, almost all part of the tumor rejected out. And I insert the fat tissue to the subdural layer and suture the fat tissue. And covers uh, 
uh, mucosal flap, and uh, tumor was water tightly sealed. Uh, of course, uh, some calcification left behind, but the most part of the tumor was successfully removed out with preservation of the, uh, his uh, vision and cognitive function. If you choose the transcranial approach, uh, we cannot perform the such radical resection. Uh, how is uh, this case? This is a lobulated cranial five years old girl, showing the uh, third nerve palsy. Uh, at first, I uh, considered the endoscopic endonasal approach, but uh, we cannot reach the lateral part. In such situation, I recently put it hard to use a combined approach transcranial and endonasal approach. This is uh, our uh, strategy. Uh, I uh, choose the uh, endoscopic endonasal approach and the right teleonal approach at the same time. I uh, drill out the bony structure around the cellar and cut the, the skull base and reach the tumor. I now open the chest and uh, fluid was evacuated. The uh, two surgeons remove the tumor through the nose and our colleague opens the Sylvian fissure to uh, access the tumor from the transcranial side. This is a Sylvian fissure. Our colleague the gently opens the Sylvian fissure and reaches uh, 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 into the uh, Sylvian cistern. And this is a tumor. This is a tumor in the uh, Sylvian cistern. And uh, our colleague gently dissects the schist wall uh, from the MCA or Sylvian vein or uh, ICA. This is a trans, uh, this is a nasal site. I also uh, uh, remove the tumor through the nose. This is a tumor capsule. I gently uh, retract. This is a pituitary gland and this is a pituitary stalk. And I carefully remove the tumor. From the transcranial side, just dissect the tumor capsule and I remove the tumor through the nose. Using this approach, we can follow the uh, schist wall and uh, resect the tumor uh, one piece. I carefully follow the entire wall of the tumor. And this is a third nerve. And I remove the capsule. This is a transcranial side, and this is an endoscopic side. That, uh, from the transcranial side, uh, we uh, dissect the tumor capsule from the MCA. This is MCA, uh, and uh, we uh, remove the tumor capsule uh, through the nasal side. And the collaboration of the both sides, uh, we uh, carefully remove the old tumor. Finally, uh, all, uh, we can reject the old tumor. And this is a pituitary gland, and we can preserve the pituitary gland and the stalk. After the surgery, tumor was totally rejected out like this. And successfully, we can preserve the pituitary function. No need the replacement. So I think if we choose the one approach, transcranial or endoscopic approach alone, 
we cannot remove the tumor totally. Uh, since uh, 2014, I operated uh, 79 cases of the cranial pharyngioma, mainly by the endoscopic and nasal approach. And extent of tumor removal was uh, fine, and visual function and the cognitive function well uh, preserved. But uh, of course, uh, we tried the radical removal of tumor, so pituitary function was not successfully uh, preserved. Uh, but the risk of CSF leakage is recently very low. So I think uh, endoscopic and nasal approach was very useful for the cranial pharyngioma surgery, especially the when we combined the bilateral posterior clinoidectomy. If the, you have the interest of this technique, please check this literature. Uh, I think the, uh, our, my conclusion is that, of course, I operate the many cases by the transcranial and endoscopic approach, but endoscopic and nasal approach for cranial pharyngioma will be main surgical procedure to cure the disease. Thank you for the uh, attention. Uh, sorry, the, the video was uh, very troublesome. Thank you, Goto Sensei. I think it, it, it's it's okay. It's still a good lecture. And sometimes the technical problem uh, happen. Uh, I think uh, I will invite uh, some panelists to give some comment or words. Uh, I will invite first uh, Professor Fred Gentili. Much. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, a very excellent uh, <coughs> presentation, Dr. Goto, and uh, very excellent uh, technical, uh, uh, you know, uh, issues. You know, everyone knows, and tomorrow I'm giving a talk on skull-based surgery, and I, craniopharyngioma will be part of it uh, tomorrow, so you'll see my, my angle of it. But no question, I totally agree with you that, you know, um, the, the best approach in the majority of cases, not in all, is the endoscopic expanded approach for craniopharyngioma. I think everybody now has come around to that. But as you say, you know, there are situations where you cannot do uh, endoscopic. Mm. To me, the lateral exposure is the, is the most, uh, you know, issue. Straight up, it doesn't matter how high it goes up to the skull thing, but, but lateral exposure to me is a limitation for the uh, uh, endoscopic uh, uh, approach. And, the problem is that, you know, craniopharyngioma remain a very challenging problem for everyone. I don't care how excellent technically you are. They do recur. I, you know, if you follow them long enough, you know, it's good. If, you know, five years, we have there, but follow them 10 years and 50 years, you see, you know, 60, 70 percent recur. So this is a problem I'll discuss a little bit today of how to beat re recurrent craniopharyngiomas. But otherwise, I agree with you. The endoscopic approach, I think, has almost revolutionized the the uh, the uh, um, surgery for craniopharyngioma. Should be the the approach uh, of choice. Okay. okay. Thank you. You're very welcome. Thank you. And I'm sorry I have to leave now, but I will see you tomorrow morning, everyone. Thank okay. you. See you tomorrow. Thank you, Thank you so much. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Bye bye. 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 Okay, is there, uh, is there any uh, question or something from panelists? Okay, uh, Dr. Yan, maybe, Dr. Nindra, Dr. Oscar, Hello. and Dr. Nyoman. Maybe Dr. Nyoman first. Thank you for uh, your uh, lecture, Professor. Good. Um, yeah, I know that Kani uh, Farinjoma is a it's actually it's not a really a skull based tumor. And um, uh, this tumor can extend to anywhere, any space. Um, and I think that uh, in the future endoscopy will be probably the main uh, surgical approaches. So regarding this extension, um, as a skull based surgeon, I think. Now I just do the microscopic, and then I will change to I'll go to the endoscopic surgery. So, in your opinion, do have do we have to 
what you call to have uh, the uh, capacity of, of for the open surgery or scalp base, open scalp base surgery first, and then we can go to the endoscopy. Because um, I think that this uh, approaches of two approaches has a limitation. And then we have to, what you call to personalize, to tolerate to every cases. So what is your opinion regarding this? Do we have to start doing, especially for the beginner, as open skull base first, and then, and then we go later on to the endoscopic procedure for not just for the current pharyngioma, but also for another skull base cases. Hmm. I think uh, yeah. it's a very uh, difficult question, but uh, recently I think the uh, whole all skull base surgeon must learn the both technique, microscopic skull base technique, also endoscopic and uh, approach. Combination is very important. As uh, presented the last case, lobulated craniopharyngioma. I think it's impossible to remove the uh, safely in just by the one procedure. So we need the both technique, endoscope and uh, microscopic scar based technique. So we need both. Mm. So, so you agree that we cannot leave the microscopic open microscopic surgery when you go to the endoscopic so that both will be benefit for the our our we learn the both at the same time okay okay okay, okay. i agree thank you okay thank you dr yaman golden i think we'll continue to the second uh, dr Indra, please take your time dr. Yes, thank Indra. you dr Buata. thank you very much uh, professor goto for your mm. excellent lecture uh and i was really uh, amazed that you were doing the endoscopic and the microsurgery at the same time. So your coordination between your colleagues is hmm. very, very good. Um, my question is, first, if you encounter a bleeding from the cavernous sinus, uh, what is your technique to, to, um, hmm. to stop the bleeding? Hmm. And the second is, since we are talking about craniopharyngiomas, it's, uh, in my opinion, it's also difficult to treat because it recurs. Uh, sometimes it recurs again, even after a very nice surgery. So what is your opinion about radiotherapy for the patients if they recur of the craniopharyngiomas? Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh... At the, the first question, uh, breathing from the cavernous sinus is uh, just venous breathing. So I think at first uh, head elevation is most important. And then the, we have the, some material to stop the venous breathing, flossil or uh, collagen seed. Just put the flossil or put collagen seed and fibrin glue. Uh, I think it's not so uh, the problem some. Uh, we can control the breathing, just head elevation and flow seal or some putting the material is enough to control the breathing. Of course, uh, uh, of course, arterial breathing is very uh, problem. So uh, not injure the carotid artery, of course. But venous breathing is not so problem. I think so. And the second question is the radio surgery to the craniopharyngioma. I think the effectiveness is not enough for the long time. Of course, a short period, IMRT or gamma knife uh, is uh, effective in some case, but usually the control rate is just uh, 60% or 70%. Uh, in case of the young patient, it, especially pediatric case, if we follow the patient for a long time, we, uh, we can uh, experience many recurrence after the radiation. So I think at first uh, we aim to cure the disease. 
Thank you very much. This is a very yes, uh, difficult problem in case of the cranial pharyngeal. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Reninta. Uh, Dr. Andrew Basuki, would you ask or comment? Thank you very much for your nice presentation and your nice technique. Uh, since our cases in Indonesia uh, are very, very big carnivalium, yeah, uh, what kind of procedure you uh, propose to, to care of that patient? Thank you. Uh, for, for a large carnivalium? Very, very big, yeah, very big. Uh, in Indonesia, we, our cases, uh, uh, mostly it's a very big kind of view. Hmm. So what kind of technique uh, you prefer to do the operation like that? Thank you. Uh, I think the recently, I think the combined approach, transcranial and endoscope is very effective to remove the large cranial pharyngeal. Because the origin of the tumor is pituitary stop. So even choose a transcranial approach, especially in large case, it's very difficult to identify the border between pituitary stop and tumor. So uh, to dissect the tumor from the pituitary stalk, I think uh, we need the endoscopic and nasal approach. But of course, uh, if tumor uh, extend to the lateral side or upward, of course, we need transcranial approach. So the, I think the combination with, is very uh, effective to radically and safely remove the large cranial pharyngeal. This is my uh, recent opinion. Thank you, thank you very much. Okay, okay thank you. Maybe next from uh, Dr. Rian. Dr. Rian. Yeah. Uh, Thank you very much for the presentation, uh, Dr. Goto. It was very interesting. I have two questions. Actually, I um, like in my experience uh, doing craniopharyngioma, we I always has the day to remove all of the part of the craniopharyngioma, especially the one that attached to the hypothalamus. And then I was wondering uh, what, how, like if you're doing like an such an aggressive removal. Um, how do uh, how is the result for the hypothalamic complication post op? And then the second, and if you did like, do you have like special study that you perform or like uh, analysis before the surgery uh, when you decide to remove all of the craniopharyngioma or when you decide to left some of it on the hypothalamus? Thank you. Mm. Uh, in some case, especially large tumor looks uh, severely compressed uh, hypothalamus. But uh, in most case, we can find out the dissectable plane. Of course, uh, I show the calcified tumor. In such situation, calcified part strongly migraine to the mammillary body or uh, phonix. In such case, if we try the radical removal, we may damage the phonix or mammillary body. In such case, patients will lose the, some cognitive function. So in such situation, we cannot totally reject. So uh, in Japan, uh, usually the size of the uh, cranial pharyngioma is not so large uh, because uh, uh, we evaluate the many patients by the CT scan or MRI. The size is limited. So in our experience, almost all case, uh, cognitive function and the hypothalamic function preserved. Of course, in some cases, we damage the pituitary stalk and uh, patients show the DI, but uh, cognitive function usually preserved. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Goto, Dr. Rian. Is there any more question because we are running off time? Dr. Yes. Okay, Dr. Selfie, Dr. Oscar, and Dr. Dodi, Dr. Willy. Maybe Dr. Dodi first, I'm sure. <laughs> Dr. Dodi first, maybe. Thank you, thank you. Nice, nice. Thank you, Goto. Uh, I want to ask you about uh, using uh, endoscopy. Uh, 
you to by nostril or one uh, nose or two nose uh, and uh, about about i want to ask about how to prevent uh cff leakage what what do you what did you do for prevent csf hmm. uh, leakage thank you very much i usually use a binostial because of course we need the wide surgical corridor not digital adenoma surgery just uh the skull based tumor like the cranial pharyngioma we need a binostial and uh, i recommend the wide opening of the cellar floor including the skull based bone so we meticulously seal the dural defect using the uh, put some uh, fat tissue or duragen in subdural layer and put some suture and cover the vascularized nasal flap. Uh, the initial the case, I need the spinal drainage, but recently I did not use a spinal drainage, just cover the uh, nasal mucosa and also put the uh, uh, gel home to fix the uh, nasal flap. Okay. Thank you, thank you, Professor. Okay, thank you. We still have four minutes. Uh, Dr. Willy, maybe next. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Sasei. I want to ask about the continuing the question of Dr. Dodi, just to support preventing the chest leakage. In your uh, opinion, did it uh, have benefit if we suturing the uh, mucosa nasal, nasal mucosa suturing? Mm. Do you do do that or just leave it uh, after you said just pulling the gel foam or dura duragen or something? Mm. Yeah. Uh, do you suturing the nasal mucos uh, that you already do uh, the operation? Mm. Thank you. I suture the dura mater, not the mucosa. Not the mucosa. At first, I insert the fat tissue and suture the uh, four or five stitch to fix the fat tissue. To put the tension to the dura mater is uh, uh, very useful to prevent the CSF leakage. And finally, uh, we have to cover the vascularized flap. Uh, nasal uh, septal flap is the uh, most important technique to prevent the CSF leakage. I think so. Okay. No. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Oscar, please unmute your mic. Hello? Oh, yeah. Okay, we can hear you. Thank you for the chance. Uh, I would like to ask uh, for your opinion uh, in some cases that uh, all the kistic craniopharyngioma, we cannot do all the gross total removal. Mm. Uh, is, uh, how about your opinion? Should we uh, perform Omaya Shan after that? Is there any special consideration for that case? Mm. Especially when you in cannot my, perform the gross total removal. Thank you, Sensei. In my in my opinion, uh, I don't like the on my tube. Mm. Uh, even inside the on my tube, some inflammation obstacle the tube, oh. and when we the operate uh, we perform the reoperation, it's very difficult. Hard granulation or something around the on my tube. So it's very difficult uh, to remove the, uh, this uh, scar tissue. So I don't like to insert the on my tube. It's uh, my uh, opinion. Okay, thank you, Sensei. Okay, thank you, Dr. Sensei. Get a selfie, maybe? The last question? Thank you, Dr. Gota. Okay. Thank you, Gota Sensei, for the okay, wonderful Dr. presentation. Um, Beautiful operative video, by the way, for the hemi transposition of the pituitary gland. Mm -hmm. I would like to ask, you were mentioning that um, you had this pan hypopit post-operatively mm -hmm. after the hemi transposition of pituitary gland. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking that you cut the inferior hypophysial artery 
before yeah. the transposition. Would you think that's the cause of the pan hypopit or because of the posterior gland that, as we know, it's only have one layer because mm. we mobilized? And would you think we can prevent that? Mm. That would be my first question. And my second question is, um, so me and my partner, Dr. Rian here, we did the combined approach, maybe only two cases like a couple of years ago, mm. but we find it, it's still difficult to work together. So what would you think about stage surgery for combined approach? Thank mm, you. Uh, at the in, uh, initial first question, uh, hemi uh, transposition of the pituitary gland cannot cause the hypopit because uh, in case of the meningioma surgery or uh, chondrosarcoma or chordoma case, I apply the same technique. In such situation, pituitary function are all uh, preserved in almost all case. But in case of the craniopharyngioma, it's very difficult to evaluate the pituitary function. Uh, because uh, we have to dissect the pituitary stalk in uh, in the subdural space. So the the um, if the patient shows a hump hypopituitarism, it's the cause of the pituitary transposition or direct manipulation of the pituitary stalk. So in case of the cranial pharyngioma, we cannot uh, conclude the transposition uh, will cause uh, the hypopit. But in meningioma case or some another tumor, I also use the same technique. But in all case, pituitary function preserved. So I think the hemi uh, dissect the pituitary gland one side and transpose one side and not cause the uh, deterioration of pituitary function. Of course, in some cases, uh, uh, shows a transient DI one month or two months. But usually this uh, deficit will uh, recover to normal level. Mm. Mm. This is uh, the answer of the first question. Thank you. And the second question, uh, in case of the cystic craniopharyngioma, I think the uh, combined approach at the same time. Uh, is very useful because uh, we can follow the entire schist wall. If we stage the operation, uh, it's very difficult to differentiate the graniation or arachnoid or tumor capsule. So in case of the cystic craniopharyngioma, I use a combined approach. But the craniopharyngioma shows us solid. I, I completely agree the stage of surgery. In some cases, of course, I choose a stage of surgery. If some uh, solid tumor left behind the interhemispheric fissure or cerebellum fissure, we can uh, resect it out, the transcranial by the two stages of surgery. This is uh, the, my answer to the second question. Thank you, Sensei. Okay, Sensei, thank you. I think this is the very last question for this okay. topic, okay. Dr. Roland. Thank you, thank you very much. This is uh, last uh, uh, opportunity for me. Uh, Sensei, uh, amazing that you make a video like uh, every craniopharyngioma is very easy to take out from your hand. <laughs> it's very, very easy. It's very amazing. Uh, I, I uh, look in your video. You said uh, you put in three devices inside the nose. Mm. So what devices in your hand? What mm. device in other hand? Mm. You put you uh, see three three devices into your nose. Mm. Uh, we reject the cranial pharyngioma by two neurosurgeon. Okay. My fellow controls the endoscope and also insert the one instrument. Jose what, what is it? What is it? It's water or is it water or so uh, knife or what? Your friend, your colleague. Uh, you, uh, my uh, colleague usually insert the suction or mm -hmm. forceps. Okay. I use a knife. You use a knife. suction. Okay. 
Also, uh, in your video, I saw a uh, watch, uh, not familiar instrument, like uh, you use an uh, intra nose nostril, uh, like a uh, chusa or something? Yeah, yeah, chusa, yeah. yes. There is any chusa from uh, Transponeda, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Already the uh, striker provide the the chusa for the Indonesian use. And right. also Integra also provide the chusa for Indonesian use. So many company already provide the accuser uh, for endoscopic Indonesian approach. Okay. Please check. How about the black one? Black little like uh, clam, the black one is uh, like a bipolar or? Yeah, yeah, bipolar, yes. It's special made from? Special bipolar for Indonesian use. Okay, it's or, only in your department already? <laughs> No, no, the, uh, the, uh, our uh, bipolar already provided. I forget the, the name of the company. Okay, okay. So the last one. Worldwide. Okay, the last one. The instrument that you stitch the Dura mm. is also uh, modified by yourself or? No, no. Uh, this uh, forceps is uh, uh, also the Indonesian use. Okay, yeah, it's because it's not familiar for me. Uh, it's very interesting for me. Thank you, Professor Goto. Thank you, Dr. Bata. Okay, thank you, Dr. Rogan. Uh, I think it's a very uh, great discussion, uh, but I'm sorry you have uh, another uh, lecture, I think. Okay. So please share screen. Okay. Can you see the slide? Yes, Sensei. Perfect. Uh, uh, so uh, next lecture is a combined petrosal approach for large petroclimal meningioma. Combined petrosal approach is a very effective procedure for safe rejection of the large petroclimal meningioma like this. But in combined petrosal approach, exposure of the sigmoid sinus and drill of the petrous bone in narrow space seem to time consuming and complicated procedure. So usually recently many doctors hesitate to use a combined petrosal approach. But in our institute, Professor Hakuba started a combined petrosal approach and my mentor Professor Ohata and I uh, continuously modify the surgical approach for safe rejection of the uh, petrochrybal or skull vest meningioma. So today I will show the tip how to safely perform the combined petrosal approach. Uh, at first, I will show how to expose the sigmoid sinus. Um, during the uh, long experience of the petrosectomy, I found out the wall of the sigmoid sinus just adheres a bony structure around the mastoid emissary vein. So if you meticulously drill out the bony structure around the mastoid emissary vein, you can expose the sigmoid sinus uh, under the macroscopic procedure not use the microscope. So surgical time to expose the sigmoid sinus very quick. And after exposure of the sigmoid sinus, uh, you uh, should not draw it out the petrous bone directly. 
at first, you should uh, dissect the dura mater around the middle fossa and presigmoidus dura to widely expose the petrous ridge. After that, just identify the lateral, posterior, and the superior semicircular canal. Uh, you can safely drill out the uh, petrous ridge like this. So our procedure was very simple. It looks like the uh, sphenoid ridge drilling uh, by the in the trans uh, terional approach. I will show the, our technique uh, later. And then uh, in the subdural space, I recommend to open the Meckel cave as an initial step and mobilize the trigeminal nerve to enlarge the surgical corridor. And then uh, Petra's apex drill out the subdural space. Uh, through this uh, procedure, uh, we can get the wide surgical corridor to drill the petrous apex. So our procedure was quick and very effective. I will show the surgical video. This case referred to us with a severe gait disturbance and dysphagia. MRI shows a very large petrocrimal meningioma compressing the brain cell. Can you see the video? Yes, good to see. This is uh, the position and the design of the skin incision. I cut the skin and harvest the temporal the flap with the pedicle of the cellulocleid mastoid. This is a temporal bone and this is a mastoid bone and this is a external auditory meatus just perform the temporal craniotomy and harvest the outer plate of the mastoid bone. And this is the sigmoid sinus. Our young fellow directly exposed the sigmoid sinus uh, under the macroscopic fashion. And I uh, move to the microscopic technique. I cut the middle meningeal artery and this is a GSPN. I expose the GSPN, and this is a middle fossa, and this is a sigmoid sinus. I carefully dissect the wall of the sigmoid sinus, and this is a, the uh, pre-sigmoid dramata. I also meticulously dissect the wall of the dramata, and this is an endolymphatic sac I cut. And then this is uh, the petrous ridge. Before start of the petrosectomy, I widely expose the petrous bone. This is a very important technique for the quick uh, minimum petrosectomy. After that, I open the uh, mastoid antrum to identify the lateral, posterior, and the superior semicircular canal. Uh, I identify the three canals. And this is a facial stimulation. I stimulate the facial nerve and identify the location of the genu of the facial nerve. And then I just drill the petrous ridge. And bone, initial bone work finished. So our surgical time of the petrosectomy was very quick. And then open the pre-sigmoid dura and detect the petrosal vein. And this is the SPS. I ligate the SPS, most anterior side. And this is a trigeminal nerve. And this is a Meckel cave. I open the Meckel cave at the initial stage. And this is a tumor uh, occupying the Meckel cave and coagulated the feeder. After devascularize the tumor, tumor was devascularized. So we can mobilize the uh, tumor of the brainstem and SGA. This is a false now. Uh, we already devascularize and detach the attachment of the tumor. 
So we can gently rotate the tumor, a very uh, clean, bloodless surgical field. This is a brain stem, and this is a tumor. Using the combined approach, we can uh, directly uh, access the vagal artery. And then uh, I drill out the petrous apex subdural space uh, to identify the six now. Anterior petrosectomy is very important to identify the six now. And I carefully dissect the tumor of the vagal artery and its perforator. And finally, all tumor was resected out. Uh, tumor was very large, but through this approach, we, we can safely remove the tumor. Of course, a uh, patient shows uh, some numbness, but we can preserve the eye movement completely and no uh, cause the facial palsy and the hearing also preserved. This is another case of the very large craniopharyngeal uh, uh, meningioma compressor brainstem. I also use the same technique. Can you see the video? Yes, good to see uh, This is uh, the uh, left side. I carefully dissect the pre sigmoid dramata. This is a sigmoid sinus running here and dissect the pre sigmoid dura of the posterior surface of the petrous bone. This is uh, the endolympatic sac. I coagulate and cut this. Uh, Dural structure. And uh, additionally, uh, dissect the dramata of the uh, petrous bone. Anyway, the wide exposure of the petrous bone is very important. And then start to the petrosectomy. Petrosectomy is very quick. Just open the mastoid antrum, and this is a lateral semicircular canal. After the opening of the mastoid antrum, it's very easy to identify the lateral semicircular canal. And also identify the superior semicircular canal and posterior. And after that, I stimulate the facial nerve and confirm the location of the genu of the facial nerve. And then I drill the just petrous ridge. No need completely dolly out the Kawaset triangle. Just dolly out along the petrous ridge was enough. This bone work is just uh, for the sacrifice of the superior petrosal sinus. So now bone work finished. And then I cut the uh, pre-sigmoid dura, and then open the mechel cave. In all case, I open the mechel cave at first and mobilize the trigeminal nerve. And uh, this is a trochlear nerve, and I uh, devascularize the tumor and uh, cut the attachment of the tumor. This case, tumor was very fibrous, but already tumor was devascularized and detached. So we can dissect the tumor relatively the bloodless surgical field. This is a vagal artery, and this is a perforator from the vagal artery, and this is a brain stem. A combined transpetrosal approach, we can directly observe the border between brain stem and tumor and finally dissect the tumor from the vagal artery. And now the, I dissected the posterior part of the tumor. And this is the anterior part of the tumor. I mean, that this is a tumor in the cavernous sinus. I remove the 
tumor in the cavernous sinus from the posterior to anterior. This is a, a fifth, third, and fourth nerve. And then remove the tumor from the pecon. And finally, I uh, rejected out all tumor. Uh, using the, this approach, of course, a uh, patient shows a uh, facial numbness after the surgery, but the uh, old tumor was successfully removed and brain stem decompressed. Uh, Post-operatively, uh, her eye movement uh, completely preserved like this, and facial and hearing also preserved. This is another case of the recurrent uh, uh, petrochrival meningioma showing the gait disturbance and the right facial numbness. And the brain stem shows a, a edema, but uh, to dissect this tumor, I choose a combined uh, transpetrosal approach. This is uh, the design of the skin incision, and I harvest the uh, fasciate. This is a previous craniotomy. I perform the temporal craniotomy and just remove the outer plate of the mastoid bone, and then our colleague nicely exposed the sigmoid sinus uh, under the macroscopic vision. And then we coagulate the middle uh, meningeal artery and expose the uh, uh, petrous bone widely. This is a, a endolymphatic sac. I cut it and I stimulate the uh, facial nerve and uh, start the opening of the foramen, uh, mastoid antra. Follow the, this procedure our uh, young staff also can perform the, this procedure because uh, anatomical orientation very easy and bone work uh, was very uh, short. So just remove the petrous ridge and our bone work was enough. And then uh, I start the tumor removal. This is a tumor in the subdural space. Uh, previous surgery caused a severe arachnoid adhesion, but I meticulously opened the mechal K at the initial stage. This is a third nerve, and I cut the tentorium most anterior side. And this is a horse nerve, and this is a SCA. And this is a, a trigeminal nerve. I carefully dissect the trigeminal nerve of the tumor, and this is a tumor. The tumor was very hard, but uh, using the, this approach, we can directly uh, detach and devascularize the tumor. This is a uh, petrocolinoid ligament and remove the calcified tumor. Uh, using the, this uh, procedure, I can directly uh, dissect the six now. This is a remnant of the anterior petrous bone. After that, I start the anterior petrosectomy again through the subdural space. So the surgical corridor was relatively large. It's very easy and the surgical time of the drilling is very short. After that, I dissect the tumor of, of the seven and eighth now. And this is a, uh, the remnant around the uh, trigeminal now. And this is a six now. I carefully dissect the six nerve and 
remove the almost all part of the tumor. And finally, the uh, almost all tumor was successfully removed out. After that, the, this is a recent uh, case, so I cannot show the MRI, but almost all tumor was successfully removed out. Uh, this is another case of the meningioma occupies the posterior cavernous sinus and around the posterior colinoid. How to remove the, this tumor? In such situation, uh, also, uh, mini combined transpetrosal approach was very effective. To see the re uh, region uh, right uh, through this angle. This is a light sigmoid sinus, and this is a tumor. I use a mini combined petrosal approach. Our procedure was always same. At first, perform the temporal craniotomy, and our resident exposed the sigmoid sinus under the macroscopic fashion, and start the petrosectomy. This is a lateral semicircular canal, and this is a superior. And uh, our bone work is just dotted out along the petrous ridge. So bone work was enough in this and then I cut the dura mater and identify the petrosal vein. And this uh, the trigeminal nerve. I cut the uh, open mechal case. Can you see the video? Yes, good to see. Hmm. Uh, this is a tumor, and this is a horse nerve, and this is a icor. Ah, sorry, SGA. I meticulously remove the tumor from posterior to anterior is a teeth of this surgery. This is a horse nerve. I gently dissect the tumor from the horse nerve and open the cavernous sinus from posterior to anterior. This is a third nerve, and this is a fourth nerve. I remove the tumor under the third nerve. So now the third nerve successfully decompressed. Uh, Post-operatively, the tumor was successfully removed out. So I think the, uh, to the posterior cavernous sinus meningioma, our procedure also very effective. Uh, how is uh, this case? This is a very large uh, petrocavernous cavernous meningioma occupying the entire cavernous sinus, dentorial ridge, ridge and embed the uh, cera through seeker. In such situation, I will show how to identify the cranial nerve. Uh, this low intensity band was very uh, important landmark. This low intensity band uh, match to the anterior petrocolinoid ligament and posterior petrocolinoid ligament. Uh, this ligamentous structure uh, is a good landmark to identify the cranial nerves. Third nerve always running the medial side of this ligament, and fourth nerve running lateral side of this ligament. 
and sits now running just under the posterior petroclinoid ligament. So if we follow the, this ligament from posterior to anterior, we can identify the uh, cranial nerve step by step. I will show the case. At first, I perform the bone work, and then open the Meckel K and uh, expose the trigeminal nerve. And I start the tumor removal around the Meckel K. This uh, fibrous structure is a petroclinoid ligament. If we follow this ligament, we can reach the anterior clinoid process. So identify the third nerve. And then I peel off the lateral wall of the cavernous sinus from posterior to anterior and identify the fourth and third nerve. This uh, petroclinoid ligament divided the two nerves. So I cut this ligament and then mobilize the tumor downward. Now I carefully dissect the tumor from the third nerve and the fourth nerve. Uh, already the 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 fee, main feeder of the uh, ICA was devascularized, so I can dissect the tumor relatively bloodless surgical field. This is a basal artery, and this is a seven and eighth now, and this is a trigeminal now. I carefully remove the tumor. This is a uh, six nerve, and I uh, remove the tumor under the six nerve, and I successfully reject it out. This is a, a vertebral artery. Through this approach, we can directly access around the VA union. So now the uh, almost part of the tumor successfully rejected out. Uh, the tumor was very large, but most part of the tumor successfully dissected out like this. But the problem is that uh, even use uh, this approach, of course, we can safely devascularize and detach the tumor around this area and identify the third, fourth, and the sixth nerve. But we cannot remove the medial part of the tumor, medial side of the oculomotor nerve, and medial part of the cavernous sinus. We cannot reach this approach. So I apply the endoscopic endonasal approach to remove the medial part of the tumor. If we observe the, this area through the nose, attachment located here. So we can easily direct access to this area. So I choose the endoscopic endonasal approach as a second procedure. I will show the case. I widely drill out the upper clivus and expose the uh, seraflora. And this is a pituitary gland. I mobilize the pituitary gland. Uh, same technique of the cranial heart trauma. Uh, pituitary gland shift mobilized to the right side and I do it out. <laughs> and this is a paracryval carotid artery. And this is a tumor medial side of the cavernous sinus. I carefully dissect. This is a tumor behind the pituitary stalk. I removed it. And this is a tumor in the medial part of the cavernous sinus. 
And this is a tumor under the optic nerve and optic uh, chiasm. And this is a carotid artery. So this is a tumor medial side of the carotid artery, safely dissected by the endoscope. After that, I can identify the third nerve. I dissect the tumor of the third nerve. So third nerve completely decompressed and relieved. And I start to remove the tumor medial side of the sixth nerve. I dissect the sixth nerve and remove the tumor around the clivus. So the uh, most part of the tumor successfully rejected by the endoscope. Uh, Post-operatively, almost all part of the tumor are successfully rejected out by the two procedures. One is a transpetrosal and the other second stage endoscopic enonasal approach. And let's see, uh, patient shows a transient uh, abducens nerve palsy, but the abducens nerve palsy uh, recovered whole uh, just one month. So uh, we can preserve the eye movement, facial function, and hearing also preserved. This is another case of the uh, meningioma occupying the completely tentorial edge, involves a posterior cavernous sinus and extended the cellar floor. In set, such case, I use the same procedure. I remove the tumor by the mini combined petrosal approach. Uh, and then I remove the medial part of the tumor by the endoscopic endonasal approach. At first, uh, I expose the uh, paracrival carotid artery and the medial part of the cavernous sinus. And I widely dory out the upper clivus and remove the posterior crinoid. And I cut the dura mater along the clivus. This is a, uh, the tumor along the clivus and this is a vagal artery and this is a tumor involves a medial cavernous sinus. I uh, remove the tumor piece by piece, and this is a tumor under the optic uh, nerve. I carefully dissect, and this is an optic nerve on the right side, and this is a pituitary gland. I mobilize the pituitary gland and dissect the tumor of the pituitary gland. This is a pituitary gland and this is a tumor. I mobilize a pituitary gland to the left side and remove the a tumor in the right cavernous sinus. I removed it piece by piece. And uh, optic nerve was completely decompressed. And this is a tumor around the sixth nerve. Uh, also, sixth nerve decompressed, and uh, most part of the tumor successfully rejected out. Sorry, the post operatively, also, most part of the tumor successfully rejected out with preservation of the pituitary function. This is uh, another case of the petrochrival meningioma. Uh, I apply the uh, combined petrosal and safely dissected out. This is uh, another case. The result was same. Uh, I applied the many case 
and also result was very good. Since 2013, I operate the 62 petrochemical main jowa, and the extent of tumor removal was successful. Of course, patients, in some cases, patients show the some transient diplopia, and also shows the numbness of hem face, but the cranial function almost preserved. So the, my conclusion is that mini combined petrosal approach is very effective procedure for radical removal of the large petrochemical mini job. And our surgical procedure was very simple. Expose the sigmoid sinus under the macroscopic procedure and just dissect the uh, dramata around the middle fossa and the presigmoid dura, and then just drill out to the petrous bridge was enough to remove such kind of the large petrochemical many job. And in case of the uh, petrochemical main geoma with wide drill attachment, combination with transcranial and endoscopic approach, I mean, staged surgery was very effective uh, to uh, get the successful result. Thank Thank you for attention. I see the mute, Dr. Guata, your, your speaker. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Sensei. Mm. Uh, we, we already see you have so many uh, good cases and excellent cases, and also the video, mm. very great. I think it's time for uh, for panelists to giving uh, some comment or question. Mm. Uh, Dr. Renindra and Dr. Irwan first. Okay, Dr. Go on, Dr. Renindra. Thank you very much, Dr. Guata. Again, an excellent uh, lecture, Professor Goto. I enjoyed it very much. And by your series about 62 petrochemical menioma cases, only a small percentage of uh, nerve, a cranial nerve complication. Please give us some tips or your tips how to preserve these uh, cranial nerves, especially mm. when you open the pre-segment dura. Mm. Of course, you have to find the fourth nerve and then the third nerve and then the sixth nerve. Uh, please give our tips for us. Mm. Thank you. Uh, it's very uh, difficult to show the tips, but most important step is to keep the surgical field bloodless. If the surgical field was clean, you can identify the cranial nerve from the posterior side to anterior. And also I combined the uh, endovascular treatment. Uh, before the surgery, I asked the endovascular team to uh, embolize the tumor from the uh, carotid artery. I mean, meaning hypophysial trunk should be embolized. If the combined the endovascular treatment, we can decrease the bleeding from the tumor. So we always, we can uh, uh, keep the surgical field bloodless. It's very important to get the uh, good outcome of the cranial nerve. Of course, in some cases, patient shows a transient uh, diplopia, but uh, if we completely uh, preserve, anatomically preserve the Abdu sense now uh, or sad now, uh, its function will recover within the three months or six months. Yes, because in the video I saw some of the Kernel nerve was a little bit stretched when mm. you were yeah, trying yeah. to dissect from the tumor. Mm. And that but caused the transient complication. In both cases, uh, we apply uh, this approach to the large petrochemical meningioma. In such case, uh, cranial nerve already stretched. So after the decompression of the tumor, we already decrease the tension of the uh, cranial nerve. So 
if you can mobilize the cranial nerve, you can safely dissect. Thank you, Professor. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Goto. Uh, Dr. Irwan. Uh, thank you, Dr. Goto. Thank you for the uh, very nice presentation, Professor Goto. Mm. It's very nice to see you here. Uh, first of all, I would like to say uh, congratulations for your new achievement. And then, uh, sorry, uh, last last month we should uh, visit your institute, but we have to cancel mm. because of this uh. pandemic. Sorry. <laughs> And then I have uh, some question. First of all, uh, question is about the uh, posterior cavernous sinus. Uh, mm -hmm. Usually, I left the tumor uh, and that part and that uh, posterior cavernous sinus. So uh, mm -hmm. I saw that now you are trying to remove all from the cavernous sinus. Mm -hmm. So could you uh, help me how to start? to come inside the governance sinus is very mm. difficult to start to come inside. Uh, the second question is uh, the inferior uh, extension below the jugular foramen. So is it also sometimes make me difficult? So that's mm. why I also open the uh, dura in the retrosigmoid. So mm. not, not, not on the presigmoid, but retrosigmoid. So I have, so mm. I can go more lower to the, even to the Tubular foramen, tubular foramen, and and the last question is almost same with the Dr. Renindra about the cranial nerve, especially for the sixth nerve, it's very difficult. Mm. Uh, I cut some sixth nerve mm. <laughs> because of the during the detachment, mm. I can see, I can see the the uh, sixth nerve during uh, the nerve entering the dura, so mm. the, and that place is. Uh, I cut the, the, the six now. So, thank you. Uh, uh, the, at the first question, uh, now I start to remove the uh, cavernous sinus tumor, but not totally. Uh, I just remove the, the posterior part of the cavernous sinus through the transpetrosal approach. It's very effective procedure, but as presented today, we cannot the tumor medial part of the cavernous sinus, just medial side of the oculomotor nerve. In such situation, we have to combine to the endoscopic endonasal approach as the second stage. Uh, if you combine the transcranial and the endoscopic approach, you can safely decompress radically, okay? And the second question is uh, uh, what the is the inferior extension to the jugular ah, foramen. Okay. Uh, of course, as you mentioned, in some case, tumor uh, extend more uh, caudal side around the jugular uh, foramen. In such situation, of course, we combine the another procedure, transcondylar or if the tumor located the medial side, I also choose the endonasal transcribal approach to access the lower part of the petrochrymal junction. So uh, in case of the lower petrochrymal meningioma, I think the surgical removal was most difficult. So we uh, have to con uh, consider the another combination, transpetrosal and Transcondylar or transpetrosal and endoscopic transcribal approach. That's uh, in the one step or the uh, two step? Two step. And two, two step. step. Okay. And uh, the, what is the last question? Uh, yeah. To identify the six nerve. Uh, okay. The uh, after the uh, tumor decompression, you should additionally drill out the petrous apex under the uh, trigeminal nerve. After the opening of the mechel cave, you should mobilize the trigeminal nerve and then drill out the inferior wall of the mechel cave. Always uh, 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 you can identify the, the dorelo canal just under the 
Posterior petrocrinoid ligament as present today. So if you uh, additionally drill out the petrous apex, you can find out the six now around the uh, dorelo canal. If you enter the CP angle, you have some risk to cut the yes. six now. <laughs> That's a problem. Okay. Mm. <laughs> thank you. Okay, thank you. Hello. I think. Present. Okay, the Dr. Dodi. Yes. Oh, Dr. Uh, Golden. Okay, please, Dr. Nyoman Golden. Okay, thank you very much for uh, your lecture. This is very nice uh, surgical procedure. I think this um, compared to the uh, Kawasaki triangle, that's very, uh, I think it's a very uh, easy to me. And, but anyway, that you sacrifice more bone to reach this tumor, more bone. You, you drill more bone than what a Kawase triangle do. So um, I enjoy this because you can, we can see uh, both sides, the posterior aspect or the petrosal and anterior aspect so that uh, we can uh, see clearly all the uh, surgical view. So what is the, uh, the your, disadvantages of your procedure compared to the Kawasaki triangle or Kawase procedure? Mm. Uh, in case of the uh, petroclimal uh, meningioma located just to the anterior side, uh, I mean, the, if the tumor attachment is just anterior side of the internal auditory canal, I think the Kawase's approach is enough to remove the uh, petroclimal meningioma. But if attachment is just uh, extend to the posterior side of the uh, internal auditory canal, I think it's better to use the combined approach. But our combined approach is not need the long surgical time. Just expose the sigmoid sinus uh, under the macroscopic fashion. And then uh, doria, just do it out to the petrous ridge. So I think the surgical time is not so different. So if uh, you operate the large petrochrival meningioma, especially attachment extend to the posterior side of the internal auditory canal. I think that our procedure is very beneficial. Okay, thank you. Okay, okay thank you. Uh, Dr. Dodi, please. Thank you. Uh, Professor Koto, I want, I need uh, your advice for my case. Dr. Kota, boleh saya share uh, screen sebentar ya? Oke, okay, okay, saya tampilkan. Oke, okay. boleh dong. Bisa di... Ya. Yeah. Dr. Pro... Koto Sensei, I have hmm. case. Hmm. Uh, I need your advice for this case. Hmm. <laughs> Please, com your comment and your advice for this case. What kind of approach and something hmm. like that. I um, think uh, this uh, tumor is a good uh, indi uh, candidate of our combined transpetrosal approach because uh, attachment is uh, 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 origin of the tumor is around, uh, around the Meckel cave and involves a tentorium. And the tumor was very large. So if you follow the uh, tumor from the uh, posterior side, you can uh, identify the cranial now. So I think the most part of the tumor decompressed if you choose a, a combined approach. I think the tumor already extended the posterior part of the uh, internal auditory canal so yeah. if you operate by the anterior transpetrosal, you cannot remove it. And also uh, suboxital is uh, not enough to remove such kind of the tumor. So, it's so combine, prof. Combine. Combine, combine. Thank you, thank you, professor. Okay, thank you. 
the next question may be from Dr. Agung. On next, Dr. Endro. Dr. Agung, could you please unmute thank your you. mic? Uh, thank you very much, Professor Goto. It's been a long time. Okay. It was 10 years ago. I was in Osaka City University. <laughs> Good so, I suppose that you use uh, you looks like a left hand surgeon. Is it right? Yeah, I'm left handed. Yeah, it's a, it's a, I, I saw your technique. It's very very useful for you because when you dissect <laughs> it, you never retract the normal tissue. You always retract the tumor itself. It's very useful because you use the left hand. Mm. And my question is, have you ever had an experience regarding the spinobisol type uh, vein? In this case, sometimes the superior petrosal sinus does not exist. And once you open the subtemporal extradural approach, you didn't see any SPS, superior petrosal sinus. Mm. And sometimes I, I found two or three cases that it's kind of a spinobisol type mm. of uh, vein. In this case, will you preserve this vein or you have any special technique when you open the anterior petrosectomy combined with posterior petrosectomy? Mm. And the other question is, uh, you said that you use two steps. The first one is a transpetrosal approach and the other one is a trans Indonesian approach. How mm. long did you perform the second operation? One month, two months, or maybe three months? Or you have any consideration on it? Mm -hmm. And the good things that I saw you, you always uh, try to find the geniculate ganglion rather than the course of the facial mm -hmm. nerve inside the petros. Is it a special uh, trick for you? Just finding the geniculate ganglion and then you can follow mm -hmm. the facial nerve inside the petros mm -hmm. and then course to the stromastoid foramen. Thank you. Uh, okay. Uh, 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 what is the first question? Uh, 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 okay. Uh, before the surgery, uh, evaluation of the uh, venous drainage system is very important. Uh, as you say, the, if the Sylvian vein drain to the uh, tentorium, I mean the uh, petrol tentorial sinus, in such case, we cannot apply the uh, combined transpetrosal approach. Uh, of course, we ha have to some mod modification to dissect the dramata and the cut tentory. But anyway, in some cases, we apply the sub approach in such situation. But in most cases, the tumor is a large, so already the uh, tentory involved by uh, the tumor invasion. So most case, uh, we can apply a combined approach. Of course, uh, preoperative ev evaluation very important. Uh, second, what is the second question? Uh, the the term between the first operation and second operation uh, using uh, transpetrosal and endoscopy. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, just uh, wait the uh, one month because. Uh, okay. uh, the patient have to go back to uh, their house and uh, come to our hospital again. It's just a social problem. So uh, of course we can wait two months. Okay. Mm. Okay. Uh, okay. What is the third question? Uh, and the last okay. one is uh, to confirm the geniculate ganglion. The intraoperative monitoring, then try to find the ganglion only, uh, not the okay. facial uh, nerve. At I stimulate, I stimulate the uh, bony structure, and usually geniculate ganglion located the surface of the petrous bone, so we can directly stimulate the facial nerve through the bony structure, and I identifies the just location and marks the uh, location. When we draw it out to the petrous apex, we have to care around the geniculate ganglion. 
so the bony uh, distance to the facial nerve is very thin. So uh, it's a landmark for the dangerous zone, okay? Okay, thank you so much, Sensei. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Dr. Agung. Uh, Dr. Andrew, maybe? Thank you very much, Professor Goto, for a nice presentation and excellent skills. Yeah. Uh, my first question is about the case of Dr. Dodi. I saw that uh, there's an hydrocephalus also in that case. So uh, it's you take over the hydrocephalus first or, or directly uh, do the operation. And my second question, I'm sorry, I want to know how long as you do that such a very nice operation until the tumor uh, clearly dissects, totally removed. Thank you very much. Mm. Uh, in some case, uh, a large pedocribal meningioma, of course, uh, cause the hydrocephalus. In such case, uh, I think that I recommend to put the ventricular drainage when retract to the temporal lobe because the pressure is very high. In uh, all procedure of the skull base surgery, keep the intracranial pressure low is very important. Hmm. Well, one step, you uh, ventricular drainage or ventricular peritoneal sun. No, just ventricular drainage. Because after removal of the tumor, hydrocephalus relief. Okay. okay. The second question, excuse me, I want to know about uh, your operation duration to take out the such big uh, meningium like this. How long? You mean the operative time? Yeah, yes. <laughs> uh, 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 case by case, uh, when the, uh, we start the, this approach, it takes a long time. Mm -hmm. I start the operation early in the morning and finish the operation uh, PM 10 or 11. But recently, we start the operation AM 9 and finish the operation PM the 6 or 7. Of course, it's a long time, but not so long time. Yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. For the okay, thank you, Dr. Andrew. Uh, Dr. Yan, do you have a question? Uh, yeah, uh, I actually have two questions for uh, Dr. Goto. Hmm. I was wondering for the tumor in the middle, uh, like um, um, better so, um, Petroclifal meningioma right in the middle of the uh, petroclifal. Um, so you, you actually have to choose side from which side of petrosol that you're going to operate. Uh, are you putting account the dominant sinus as a consideration, or you mostly uh, you mainly uh, depends on, uh, or you put the symptoms in the into the consideration? And then the second question is, uh, uh, do you mentioned that you perform like uh, endovascular embolization before the surgery. And then uh, what is the like the, the time frame uh, between the endovascular uh, embolization and then the removal of the tumor? Thank you. Hmm. Uh, sorry, the, I cannot catch the first question. Uh, the first question is uh, when you when there's a petroclival meningioma right in the middle, of the hmm. petrocoifal area, and then uh, if you have to choose a site uh, for uh, the surgery, okay. do you put uh, uh, the dominant sinus as a consideration, hmm. or you mainly depend on the uh, hmm. like rely on the symptoms? Uh, in in our experience, even the dominant side, we can uh, safely expose the sigmoid sinus, and no complication. So. Uh, we don't care the dominance of the sigmoid sinus. Mm -hmm. We can apply the, this approach to both sides. Okay? Mm -hmm. Not care the dominance of the sinus. Okay. Thank you. Uh, what about the uh, endovascular embolization? 
Uh, the, usually, our routine is uh, uh, two or three days before the surgery. We plan the endovascular embolization and then uh, tumor removal. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Sir. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Rian. I think there's uh, one of your uh, fellow, Dr. Professor Goto. Hmm. It's uh, Dr. Please show yourself, Dr. Dr. Pri? Yes. Uh, yes. Okay, please. Can you... I show your? We cannot show your feedback. Three. How to how to speak? Do you do you hear me? Yes. Oh. Oh. Okay. Hello. 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 Hello Embolization, preoperative embolization in every case. Uh, of course, I try the old case. Mm. Mm. Because my, uh, my course, the... uh, in some case, uh, not so uh, effective of the embolization. Yes, yes. But, uh, uh, in all case, if the uh, even the occlusion of the middle meningeal artery also mm -hmm. effective to shorten the surgical time. Yes. Uh, if you uh, embolize the uh, middle meningeal artery, you can decrease the uh, bleeding from the uh, petrous bone and mm -hmm. the dura mater. So surgical time uh, short, shorter than more than one hour, I think so. So uh, always we try to perform the embolization. If mm. the minimal hypophysial trunk, I mean the fissure from the carotid artery embolite, uh, embolization more effective mm. or safe uh, removal of the tumor. Because usually my interventionist always told me that uh, uh, they found that the most, most of the tumor, uh, sub, the blood supply came from the meningual hypophysial trunk. Mm. And uh, he said that it, it's very dangerous to perform the embolization via the mean coffee with CO trunk. Is it true? Yeah, true. Uh, our team also say that in our team, in 70% uh, uh, of the case, uh, our team can embolize the mm. hypophysial trunk. Mm. And when, when, when my cases uh, did not receive the embolizations and intraoperatively, I, do you how how to uh, do the uh, intraoperative, you know, devascularization? What is your mm. uh, steps to do the intraoperative embolization? Yeah. And I mean, the uh, devascularization. Embolize the feeder. At mm -hmm. first, you go to the Mechel cave mm -hmm. and open the uh, Mechel cave and to start the tumor removal around the Mechel cave. Mm. Mechel cave is the anterior side of the tumor attachment. Yes. You remove the tumor around the mechel cave. I think the most part of the feeder okay. from the carotid artery devascularize. Yes. And then cut the tentorium, most anterior side. Hmm. If you cut okay. the tentorium, most anterior side, and also remove the tumor around the mechel cave. Uh, I think the uh, most feeder already devascularize. Hmm. So uh, I recommend to start the tumor removal around the mechel cave. Mm, but uh, my my last case of pretrochiral meningioma uh, last Wednesday, uh, I found that uh, my case has a very anterior location of the pretrochiral vein, mm. and the tumor is located uh, posteriorly. So I have to, you know, go go backward and cut mm. in front uh, to to reach the in front of the pretrochiral vein. So mm. it's very difficult to cut to the most entry side. What is your tips in that case? If the pitocell were located very anteriorly and the tumor located very posteriorly? Uh, Petrous vein located anteriorly? Ent entry side, yes. Very, very entry side. But the tumor itself located if, uh, uh, very you posteriorly. If the some vein anterior side, I think mm -hmm. it's not the petrocell vein. 
Mm. It's a original, the main, I forget the name, but it's mm. a drainage to the Mekel K. Oh. You can sacrifice uh, this vein. Mm. Mm. Uh, in my experience, always the attach, if uh, this, uh, if we operate the petrol cryber mining over, uh, petrol cell vein running the posterior side of the tumor. Mm. Oh, always, yes. Okay, thank you, Dr. Koto. Congratulations again. Oh. <laughs> okay, thank you, Dr. Yes, thank uh, you. I think we have uh, the last question from Dr. Oscar. Dr. Oscar, please unmute your mic. Thank you, uh, <coughs> Dr. Guata. Uh, thank you, oh. Professor Goto. Uh, have you ever encountered uh, any balance uh, issue after uh, performing especially uh, after drilling out the canalis semicircularis, semicircular canal? Mm. Uh, just identify the semicircular canal, not open the canal. Oh, do not okay. open the canal. Mm. Not open. Oh. Just identify the cortical bone. Okay? Okay, thank you, mm. thank you. <laughs> so can, can it's a very... Oh, okay. <laughs> the Taralan, please. Okay. So it's very nice. Always amazing. Look, looking into your hand, doing such a great tumor, very huge tumor, very easy to take out from the the brain, Professor Goto. I, I admiring you. Uh, Not easy. But it took a long time. <laughs> amazing. Always. Uh, you always said you let your fellow, your resident, open. Uh, mm. The drilling of the bone wax, yeah, the mm. bone, and then uh, remove the sigmoid sinus presegmoid area by microscopic, right? Mm. Uh, yeah. Have you ever found that uh, complication about the sinus, uh, your resident or your fellow uh, uh, accidentally, uh, you know, uh, cut or bleed the, from the sinus? No, the. Uh... Uh, of course, uh, we have the, some the training to expose the sigmoid sinus. At first, uh, our resident have to understand the anatomy of the wall of the sigmoid sinus. As present today, uh, the, the wall of the sigmoid sinus just uh, attach the uh, petrous bone around the uh, mastoid emissary vein. Mm -hmm. So all case, I uh, advise uh, young staff to ad identify the uh, emissary vein and draw it out of the uh, bony structure around the mastoid emissary vein by the diamond bar, not cutting bar. So okay. uh, the resident or young staff uh, use a diamond bar meticulously around the mastoid emissary vein, no risk to injure. I, uh, did the same procedure, but no experience uh, large sinus injury. Okay, so okay. I think it's the, the safe procedure. It's safe procedure. So the last question uh, is: staff yeah. understand the tip? Yeah, after the after, after the training, right before before you do that. Mm. So uh, the last question: what, what what's the the, the difference? The, the main difference between the combined mini. Uh, with uh, the, the classic uh, transport uh, presigmoid approach. What is the, the, the main difference? Uh, the, uh, the presigmoid approach, uh, they did not the, do it out to the anterior part of the petrous apex. Okay. Our approach is uh, the combination of the anterior petrosal and presigmoid. Okay. Okay. So, uh, to identify the six snap, we have to draw it out to the most anterior part of the petrous apex, mm -hmm. just under the trigeminal nerve. Mm -hmm. It's very important to identify the Dorero canal. Okay. Dorero canal is a good landmark to identify the six snap. Yeah. No variation. So it's very uh, useful landmark to identify six now. So we have to draw it out to the 
Presigmoid and Petrus Apex. So I mean, this is a combined okay. Petrosal approach. Okay. Okay, we'll try. We'll try it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Goto. Thank you, Dr. Goto. Okay. Thank you. Uh, excellent lecture and excellent uh, discussion from the panelists. But uh, Goto Sensei, I have a question from the question and answer box. It's from my senior, Dr. Arvinder Singh. Dear Professor Goto, thank you for your excellent presentation. I have a question. In op in your opinion, which cases do we need to use transcochlear approach where we have to mobilize the uh, seven nerve? Thank you. Uh, in my recent experience, no need to use the transcochlear approach. If the tumor located uh, more uh, caudal side, uh, we usually use a second stage surgery by the transcribal endoscopic transcribal approach or transcondylar approach. So the I never use the transposition of the facial nerve. Okay. Ten years ago, I used to the transcochlear approach to mm -hmm. remove the such kind of the lower petrochimal meningioma. But recently, I combined the transnasal transcribal approach by two stage surgery. Okay, thank you, uh, Goto Sensei. And also, there's a one question from Cho Tansiri. I might be came from Thailand. Do you always need angiogram study before perform combined petrosal approach? Mm, sorry. Uh, do you always need angiogram study? Study. Angio mm. uh, angiogram study before perform the combined petrosal approach. Uh, of course. Mm. Uh, yeah. We have to check the the feeder of the tumor. It's very important. In, in some cases, uh, meningohypophysial trunk is a dominant feeder. But another case, ascending pharyngeal artery is a main feeder. So to evaluate the main feeder is very important to plan the surgical strategy. So always uh, we use uh, angiogram and also okay. preoperative embolization. And also during my time in Osaka uh, last summer, I believe that uh, we also always have studied the uh, MRI and the CT scan on the computer before you perform. Yeah, yeah, I think course. it's also important for me. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it's um, already more than two hours we uh, have the webinar. Uh, thank you uh, for your uh, lecture. I believe we all, mm. we all here uh, learn so many things from you. Mm and uh, especially for the uh, modified combat petrosal approach. And to mo uh, I hope uh, all of the attendees will answer the questionnaire. It's only take one minute. And then uh, Goto Sensei, uh, I would mm. like also to remind you that tomorrow we are gonna have uh, mm. Professor Fred Gentili. Mm. Uh, we invite you also for the next uh, mm. Uh, lecture from Fred, the, the Professor Fred Gentili with the topic the evolution of the scalp surgery from the open to endoscopic technique current state of the art. It's uh, the same time, uh, 7 p.m. Invitation email. Okay, I will send you. I will send you, Sensei. Okay, before we end this webinar, uh, I would like to ask uh, Dr. Roland as our chief to give comment before we end this webinar. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Guata. It's such a nice webinar uh, uh, on behalf of our department, Pajajaran uh, University, and also, uh, excuse me, Dr. Andrew, my senior professor, and all uh, Indonesian Neurosurgery Society here, as represent from uh, all Indonesian neurosurgeon from uh, everywhere, Professor Goto. We like to thank you very much for your time. I think it's already night in Japan, right? Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> it's only 12 o'clock, I, I think, again. So, <laughs> 11. <laughs> 11, yeah. Mm. So, thank you very much. Uh, please, uh, anytime, uh, any any chance for us to invite you again, please don't uh, uh, bother. Then, and, 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 and.
and please continue our relationship between uh, Indonesian neurosurgeon who like to uh, study math from you. So, so maybe our department also uh, come to uh, your department to take some, uh, yeah, so many experience from you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Endro. Uh, as uh, I'm my senior, Dr. Renendra, all the panelists. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Julius, uh, whole friend. Thank you. Thank you very much for from this evening. Nice evening. Uh, I think you. we enjoyed the, the, the lecture, the webinar. So that's it. Uh, good night, everybody. Good night, uh, everyone. Also, the, the participants for all around the world, I think, I guess. So we meet uh, tomorrow. Hope so. So the time to Dr. Guata again. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you for all the panelists, all the attendees, and uh, Goto Sensei. Thank you very much for your time. Okay. I think it's time for us to say goodbye. Thank you very much. Arigato Thank you. Thank you, Goto Sensei. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Good night. Okay, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Julius, thank you. 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 Ayo Bang Rola, terima kasih ya. Masih bin. Terima kasih. Terima kasih. Terima kasih. Terima kasih. Terima kasih semuanya. Terima kasih. Dr. Ibi, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Oke, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Nice to meet you, Dr. Pri. Dr. Ahmad Jana. Dr. Boyke. Thank you, Dr. Thank you, Dr. Thank you, Dr. Thank you. 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 Thank